All right. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Katie. I'm so excited to be here today um, talking all things athlete nutrition with you guys. You'll have plenty of time to ask questions at the end. So if you've got questions, go ahead, write them down. Anything I say, um, really excited to answer those for you. So if you guys are interested in my background and who I am, where I'm coming from, I was also a synchronized swimmer. I was a synchronized swimmer for 11 years. Um, I was fortunate enough to be appointed to three U.S. national teams in 2008, 2009, and 2010 before I went on to compete for The Ohio State University, which is where I was lucky enough to swim with Coach Lorraine. Um, and I was part of two title teams and captain those last two years during Lorraine's two years. I'm sure she has stories. Um, since retiring from swimming, I have been a registered dietitian since 2016. I am currently working on my master's in sports and fitness. And two years ago, I started my own nutrition coaching company called Spot of Strong Nutrition, which is um, what I'm doing right now. So today we're going to dive into all things sports nutrition, but first we have to set the foundation. So what is the foundation of nutrition? Maybe you've heard of macros before. What the heck are macros? Macronutrients are the building blocks of our food and our bodies, and they provide us with energy. So there's a big difference between macronutrients and micronutrients. Micronutrients are your vitamins and your minerals. They're very important for our body to function, but they don't provide our body with any energy macronutrients do, and we need all three macronutrients in order for our body to function optimally. There are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. We'll dive into those a little bit more, um, but for a quick basis, carbohydrates provide our body with energy. They are our brain's preferred, preferred energy source, and they're stored in our muscles as glycogen. So when we're being physically active, we are engaging in practice we have energy, so we're not feeling tired and lethargic and sluggish. Um, and the other thing is our brain functions best off of carbs. And so we want to make sure that we're having enough carbs so we can think. If there's one thing about synchro, it's a very tactical sport. We have to know patterns. We have to be able to adjust really quickly. Our brains need to be functioning very fast. Proteins, on the other hand, may be one you're more familiar with. They are the building blocks of our muscles and also our skin our hair, our nails, everything. Protein is what keeps our body strong. And so we want to make sure we're having adequate protein um, because we're breaking down our bodies as athletes. We want to have enough to rebuild. And then fats are one I think we often forget about in sports, but they are crucial to our development, our growth, our hormone function. Um, they're also really important for micronutrient absorption. So a lot of people are talking about your immune system right now. It's a very hot topic. Uh, in order to absorb vitamin D, which is one of those micronutrients that has been shown to help support your immune system, you have to have adequate fat. There, uh, fat is also important for cell signaling so that our cells can talk to each other um, and hormone balance. So as female athletes, since synchro tends to be a pretty female dominated sport, I know we're seeing more guys in it, which is exciting. Um, but as female athletes, we wanna make sure we're having adequate fat so our hormones are functioning properly as well. So what are these? I'm saying carbs, fats, proteins. Maybe you have some ideas about what foods contain each, um, but just a couple of examples. Carbs are gonna be things like pasta, bread, rice, fruit, all fruit. All fruit is gonna be considered a carb. Milk, because milk has lactose in it, which is a sugar. Yogurt, crackers, cereal, pancakes, waffles, tortillas, potatoes, corn. I tried to think of a lot of ideas to give you some examples of what carbohydrates would be. So all of these are gonna be your first line of energy. When you're thinking about carbohydrates, think first line of energy. When we're talking protein, the most basic form of protein is gonna come from your meat, chicken, fish, pork, beef, um, also eggs, milk, and then we have plant-based proteins as well, like tofu, soy, soy milk, adamame, beans, yogurt. Um, if you're gonna do like a plant-based yogurt, I recommend soy because it's gonna have more essential amino acids, uh, cottage cheese, and then your nuts and your nut butters. The thing with nuts and nut butters is they're kind of a two for one because they're both protein and fat. Um, and so you're getting the best of both worlds there. Then we move into fats. What kind of foods contain fats? Avocado is probably one of the most well-known ones. Love avocado. 
And then same thing, like I said, nuts and nut butters are gonna count as both a protein and a fat. Full fat dairy products, oils, cheese, chia seeds, um, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, those are all gonna provide your body with uh, healthy fats to help support hormone function, cell signaling, all of that. Now that we've got kind of the foundation laid, let's chat Sports Nutrition 101. Pre-workout, you are getting ready to go to practice, what do you do? If you can, have a meal three to four hours before practice. This is gonna really set you up for best success because you'll have plenty of time to digest, provide your body with energy, get in all three macronutrients, carbs, fats, and proteins, but we know that's not always realistic. And times right now are really kind of strange and schedules are all over the place. And so if you don't have time or the opportunity to have a meal three to four hours before practice, focus on a carb-rich snack one to two hours prior. And the reason, again, we're focusing on carbohydrates before practice is because we want to have energy. When we deplete our glycogen stores and we are only functioning off of any reserves that we have, our body goes to protein and we start to break down our muscles. We want to preserve our muscles as much as we can. So pre-practice, focusing on carbohydrate snack one to two hours beforehand if you can't have a meal, um, you know, three to four hours before your practice. Some examples would be a peanut butter banana sandwich, yogurt with berries, an apple with uh, an apple or banana with your favorite nut butter, homemade trail mix. One of my favorites would be doing two parts dried fruit, one part nuts. Again, focusing on those quick carbs for energy. So now we've practiced, we have worked really hard, we've done lots of swim throughs or whatever stage you are at. How do we recover? because it's just important that we recover from our practice as it is that we give everything we can during practice. Without recovery, everything you do during practice, you're not gonna get as much benefit. So post-workout, we wanna focus on carbs plus protein. You may have heard this before, but the ideal ratio for carbs to protein for recovery, based on all the research we have done, is a three to one ratio. So that would mean three carbs to one protein. That's why if you've heard of chocolate milk being the ideal post-recovery, it could even be chocolate soy milk, um, that's because it has that three to one ratio already. So it's really easy. So focusing on a carb plus protein snack or meal within one to two hours, sooner if possible, after your workout. Some examples could be a recovery smoothie made with milk or yogurt and fruit, chocolate milk like I mentioned, maybe a turkey and ham on tortilla wrap. Now, one of the reasons I always recommend if you're struggling to eat after a workout, because this is a big thing, and especially being synchronized swimmers, we're upside down, right side up. Maybe you don't feel like eating after a workout. It's still important to get in fuel. I recommend liquid fuel in the form of a smoothie or chocolate milk or something like that. Um, because when we're so focused on exercising, our body isn't focused on digesting. And it takes a minute for us to calm down before our body's focused on digesting again. And so putting something liquid in can be a really great way to fuel your body without having that heavy feeling post-workout. I know when I was done practicing, it was, a, it was a good amount of time before I actually felt hungry like I wanted to eat again. Well, by that time, I've kind of passed the window of optimal refuel to get the most benefit out of, um, out of my practice. So liquid, liquid energy is a great way to go. Liquid refuel, smoothies, chocolate milk, um, maybe even like acai bowls, whatever it is, as long as you're focusing on carbs and protein. Protein comes into play post-workout. It's really important for recovery there. Okay, we're gonna send, spend a little bit of our time here as well. And these are athlete fueling plates. How do you know how much to eat and when? This is the biggest question. So we have them divided into three different days. We've got your hard training day, your moderate training day, and your rest day. And I've put some examples of what that looks like in terms of synchro training, since we have a very specific sport. Um, what would constitute a hard day, a moderate day, and a rest day? So on a hard day, which is gonna be lots of intense land training, lots of swim throughs, you're prepping for competition, two-a-days if you're having two-a-days holiday training or endurance training pre-season when you're doing all of your um, speed swimming workouts, that's gonna be considered a hard day. And for our hard plates, we wanna have 
half of our plate carbohydrates. We want to have the other half divided in half again. One half of it's going to be your veggies. The other half is, or the quarter, excuse me, that's a quarter is going to be your veggies, and the other quarter is going to be your protein. Now, you may notice that fat's not really mentioned on here. That's because oftentimes we're getting fats included in the way we're cooking our protein and our veggies. If you're using olive oil um, or if you're having a meat, oftentimes meats also have fats in them. Um, or however you're, if you're adding avocado, something like that, this is going to be your hard training plate. Um, the reason we focus mostly on carbs is because you're using a lot more carbs during those hard days and you want to make sure you're adequately fueling your muscles. So we're not breaking down protein, which again is your muscles. So these would be your synchro examples. When it comes to moderate training days, some examples there would be choreography, routine cleaning, skills training, lots of ballet leg laps, lots of matching, different things like that. You're holding egg beater positions for a long time, making sure the angles are right. You're still engaging your muscles, but it may not be at the intensity that we do when we are training for swim throughs. So our moderate day plate still focuses on adequate nutrition, but it's broken up into a third. A third carbs, a third protein, a third veggies. We're not gonna need as much carbs because we're not at that high level of intensity. This is a great opportunity to optimize your protein and your veggies here. When it comes to our rest day plates, again, synchro is very unique sport. And so we do have days off sometimes, but we also have land drilling and light stretching that could be considered part of your rest day plate. Because veggies, and you may be wondering why are veggies not highlighted on these hard and moderate day plates, um, because veggies are high in fiber, they're often hard for the stomach to break down. It takes a lot for our body to digest fiber. And again, when we are working out, when we are in practice, our body's not sending blood to our stomach to digest. What it's doing is it's sending it to our muscles so that we can perform. And so digesting lots of fiber can be challenging on days that you have hard workouts. That's why on rest days, it's the perfect opportunity to really focus on getting your veggie intake in because veggies are going to be um, helpful for, again, fiber, which is, I could, I could do a whole lecture on the importance of fiber, um, but also those micronutrients that we talked about because carbs and proteins will have micronutrients. We're lucky that a lot of our carb sources are fortified with micronutrients like B vitamins and folic acid, but you're not going to get the variety that you would during um, eating more veggies. And so on your rest day, that's when we can take the opportunity to maximize and optimize our veggie intake. Okay, so we talked fuel. Fuel is super important. We want to make sure that we are adequately fueling ourselves because when we don't, our training is only half as good. Without adequately fueling and refueling, you're not going to get the most benefit out of your training. If there's one regret I have from my career, it's that I did not adequately fuel myself. And I often wonder how much better could I have been if I would have adequately fueled myself and taken my nutrition more seriously. Um, so that is why now I love doing this and helping other athletes not have that same regret. But in addition to fueling yourself well, we also have to focus on hydration. And the thing with hydration is that even a small amount of dehydration for an athlete can drop your performance. So what are some hydration basics when it comes to practice time? So if your practice is less than an hour, water is adequate. Some of those lighter training days, if you're doing land drilling or light stretching, it's not really exerting yourself, water is going to be adequate. If your practice is more than an hour, which oftentimes a lot of our practices are, a regular sports drink is going to be really important. And that's because when we aren't able to refuel with carbs during our practice, our glycogen and our blood glucose drops down. Um, and again, glycogen is just the fancy word for energy stored in our muscles. So the energy in our muscles goes away. And when that goes away, that's when we start to break down our muscles for energy. And that's when we lose muscle and we lose strength. And we don't want that to happen. That's the opposite of what our goal is. So practice is over an hour. Um, I do recommend having some sort of a sports drink during that time period. 
if your practice is, or before your practice, two to three hours before your practice, you wanna make sure you're having at least 16 ounces of water. This is to prep your body. If you go into practice partially dehydrated, specifically in the mornings, which is really challenging for our Saturday morning practices, right? Because we're rolling out of bed, showing up at the pool, we're probably not very hydrated. So no, I'm not asking you to wake up two to three hours before your Saturday morning practice. Um, but when you do wake up, prioritizing your hydration before you show up at the pool. So 15 minutes before practice, having at least eight ounces of water. And pre-practice, water is plenty. Um, one of the reasons I really stress hydration, especially for aquatic sports, is because we don't realize how much we're sweating. It's really hard for us to identify how much we're sweating because we're in the pool. We're possibly cold in the pool. Um, we're not able to keep keep a pulse on how much fluid we're losing. And so we have to be intentional with our hydration, specifically being aquatic athletes. Um, so less than an hour, water is totally fine. More than an hour, consider having a sports drink. Or you could make your own rehydration solution. And this is one of my favorite recipes from a fellow sports dietitian that I've connected with. Um, and it's 500 or, or half, half a liter of water, half a juice of lemon, one teaspoon of honey, and an eighth a teaspoon of salt. The reason for all of those is you're gonna get electrolytes from the lemon, specifically potassium, which is really important in keeping your hydration status. The honey is gonna provide your energy. Remember, we wanna keep our energy and our muscles or our glycogen fueled the entire time. And then sodium is really important in keeping our, our hydration status as well. Just drinking water is not gonna cut it when we are at high intensity, those hard training practice days. Um, when we only drink water, we kind of dilute ourselves down and we lose the ability to keep ourselves hydrated. I know that sounds weird. You're like, what? I'm drinking water, I'm losing the ability to stay hydrated. We're flushing out all these electrolytes that keep the hydration in our body. So we wanna make sure that we are replenishing those as well. And this is, this is the perfect solution to do that. I love this hydration solution. Um, and it's really easy and it's stuff that you can find at the local grocery store and you don't have to spend a ton on fancy sports drinks because this will really cut it. Um, yeah, and you can alternate between this and water during practice. Speaking of sports drinks, um, sports drinks are often... There's a lot of controversy around sports drinks. Should we have them? Should we not? They're too high in sugar. Um, we need to cut down on that. The thing is, is that the sugar has a purpose. Um, and sometimes what I do recommend is doing half sports drink, half water, because they can be a lot. It can be a lot to stomach. I know if I were to drink like a Gatorade or a Powerade during a practice, it would not sit very well on my stomach and I would not be feeling so great. And that's the opposite of what we wanna do. We want our fueling and our hydration to help keep us feeling really good. And so maybe doing half water, half sports drink to water it down a little bit. But the purpose of sports drinks, the sugar or the glucose, is to keep energy levels up during practice. Maintain your blood sugar levels, keep your muscles fueled. Again, if, if we're not able to have a snack during practice, which is really hard in aquatic sports, um, just because oftentimes pools don't allow you to have snacks on the side uh, for you know, cleanliness reasons, um, right now, we've got the added difficulty of COVID and all of all of the safety precautions that come with that. Um, that's why sports drinks are so helpful because they can fill that gap. But the sugar there is to keep your keep your energy levels up. I know I say glycogen, that's the fancy word, but it's basically just to keep your energy levels up so you can keep performing during practice. Um, electrolytes decrease the risk of cramping. I don't know about you guys, but my toe point wasn't always the best. So I had to really work hard to get my toes pointed, the number of calf cramps that occurred because of it. <laughs> if only I had had some electrolytes um, to help keep my muscles from cramping. And like I said, it also helps to maintain your fluid balance because even the slightest decrease in fluid status, dehydration, can negatively impact performance. So you're getting about halfway through practice. Um, you're like, okay, we're halfway. I got this, but you're feeling that slump. That's when you need something for a little bit of a boost. Your sugar, your electrolytes, your fluid to keep you going. All right, now the more practical side of it, practice snacks. 
What do we do for practice snacks? When you're on your way home from practice or during a practice break, um, depending on if you're having a two a day or whatever it might be, there are a couple of options that we can just keep in our bag. Quick fuel, it's easy to transport, um, and it's a really great way to optimize your fueling and get the most benefit out of your practice. So some of my favorite practice bag snacks are beef jerky plus crackers, goldfish, and Cheez-Its. Um, whichever one, you don't have to do all three, but whichever one you like, those are just some suggestions. Fruits and nuts, these are some of my favorite pairings of fruits and nuts. Clementine plus pistachios, apples and peanuts, bananas, walnuts, raisins, almonds. What I love about these is they don't need refrigeration because refrigeration can be hard to find and our bags are probably either sitting in the locker room or out on deck and we don't want things that are gonna go bad. And so what's nice about these is you can just throw them in your bag, you can have them on your way home from practice. So you can open up your beef jerky and have your crackers ready to go and snack on them while you're telling mom or dad how practice went. Same thing with the fruit and the nuts. Um, the main thing to point out here is they're going to be always a protein and a carb compared together, pairing those together for your post-practice. Um, if you were to have this in the middle of practice, I would recommend not having the protein or the fat. And the reason for that is because again, just like fiber, protein and fat is hard to digest. It takes a lot of energy for our body to break down proteins and fats, as well as fiber, um, and that can decrease your ability to perform. It can cause GI upset. We don't want any upset stomachs during practice, so focusing only on the carbohydrate piece. The crackers, the goldfish, the Cheez-Its, um, even sometimes fruit can be a little hard on the stomach, so figuring out what works best for you. Now that you're heading into season, I would recommend sticking with what you know is best, um, but maybe next season, pre-season, trying it out. We call it gut training in the sports nutrition world. Just like you train for your sport, you have to train your gut to properly fuel as well. If you're like eating before practice is hard for me, um, start by training it. Small things, seeing what works best, um, and then moving up to appropriately sized um, snacks or meals before your practice. And then I didn't talk about this last one, but the pretzels plus the string cheese. That's going to depend on how long practice is because string cheese, we want to be careful because it has to stay refrigerated. Um, or maybe this is a snack that mom or dad can bring and have it in the car for when you get out of the pool, you're in the car, you're ready to go home, you have these snacks, you are able to fuel yourself right away, you don't have to wait the one to two hours, and you're going to really optimize everything you got from, from working, from your practice. Okay, so... Coach was saying that we're heading into competition season. That's so exciting. I really hope that we're able to, to see this competition season through. I'm, I am optimistic about it. Um, what do you do on competition day? You've done all of this training. You've optimized your fueling, heading into practices. Now, how do you fuel for your competition? So I was thinking about synchro competitions, and we know we are there all day long. They tend to be all-day events, so you want to be very mindful about your nutrition and making sure that you're prioritizing your fueling. Aim to eat one to two hours before you compete. That would be my recommendation. Focusing on carb-rich foods for energy. We want to limit eating less than an hour before you compete because again, digestion takes energy and we want to make sure all of our energy is focused on our routines. We're able to dive in and give everything we have, but if our body's digesting, we might be feeling sluggish from eating. So the timing on competition days is really important. Having a carb, carb rich foods one to two hours before you compete is going to maximize your performance and also decrease any upset stomach. Um, so some of my favorite go-tos would be toast with jam, cereal and milk, crackers, fruit, and again, sports drinks. Um, if, you're, if you're someone who really struggles with an upset stomach on competition days, stick with liquids. There's nothing wrong with that. Sports drinks will be fine. Smoothies, a um, couple hours before you compete will be just adequate to keep you fueled throughout your competition. Limit high fat, high fiber foods especially on competition days. So we talked about it for practice, but especially on competition days, you want to limit your, your high fat, high fiber foods because it takes so much energy to digest and can really upset your stomach. 
anything we can do to minimize distractions, to minimize um, not being able to give everything in the pool, our nutrition is a piece of that. So limiting high fat, high fiber foods. Um, some examples of that would be, you know, the nut butters. They're great for post-workout refueling, but pre, probably not such a great idea. Avocado toast, super trendy right now, probably not the best idea pre-practice. Um, you go to the hotel, they've got like a buffet in the morning, probably sticking more with like the cereals and the toasts and maybe some yogurts um, instead of like the sausage or the bacon or the eggs or whatever they have there. That's probably going to sit pretty heavy on you and impact your ability to perform. And again, we can't, re we can't forget hydration. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I was the worst at hydrating during competitions. And so what I would recommend is setting an alarm. Remind yourself at least every hour to be drinking four to eight ounces of water. Water's fine. Um, you know, making sure that you're, if you're eating throughout the day and you're hydrating, water would be fine. It's different than our practices where we're practicing, you know, two to three to four hours, depending where you may want to have a sports drink for our competitions, just consistently hydrating and eating enough throughout the day is going to give us enough electrolytes, give us, give us enough energy, keep us adequately fueled so we can really perform well. Okay, so I briefly chatted about rest day nutrition, but I wanted to just chat a little bit more about rest day nutrition. Um, and I know that maybe you've had more rest days recently than we normally would because of COVID. So how can we still be optimizing our fueling and our nutrition on rest days? I'm a big proponent of the all foods fit mentality, um, making sure that we are incorporating foods that we really like and also foods that are going to encourage promoting our, our abilities to perform, um, but not necessarily cutting things out. So we talked about initially veg power. That's what I like to call it. It kind of sounds cool, veg power. Focusing on lots of veggies on rest days because we don't necessarily have the opportunity to do so on other days. So really focusing on half of your plate being vegetables. Whatever veggies you like, it doesn't matter. They're all great for us. Um, and loading up on your veggies on your rest days. But let's talk about those fun foods plus performance, especially coming into the holidays. I think this is a topic that I want to just chat on a little bit more um, because we, we want to be able to enjoy our fun foods, but in a way that's also going to optimize our performance, keep our training on focus. So what I recommend is always balancing your plate first, taking a look at are we having a hard day, a moderate day? We're probably doing a, a rest day when we're having our holiday fun foods. So prioritizing our veggies, our carbs, and our protein. Then adding in whatever fun food it might be. Um, with Christmas, Hanukkah, holidays coming up, having a cookie on the side, or if it's pizza. One of the questions I get most often actually is about pizza. Like how can I incorporate pizza into a, fu a fueling training plan? Um, pizza is great because it's carbs, fats, and proteins, but we're missing a lot of the color there with the, with the vegetables. So doing pizza plus a salad, these are ways that you can take foods that are fun and still make them fit into your fueling plan. Um, if you guys have questions about that more so when, we, when I'm done with the presentation, happy to explain more how to incorporate those fun foods so they still optimize your fueling plan and benefit your performance instead of kind of hindering it. Um, but so making sure that you're focusing on the plate first and then adding the other things in on the side. Rest day nutrition, I think, is one of the things that I missed out the most on when I was competing um, because I figured, well, I'm not working out as much, so I don't need to eat as much. The reality is we still need to, we still need to fuel our bodies even on rest days because our body's recovering. And so this is the best way to do it, focusing on your veggies plus your carbs and your proteins, not eliminating these because your body still needs to function. That's when we're doing our most recovery and our muscles are probably growing the most is on our rest days. Okay, so this is a, com a common topic I get questions on and it's fad diets. And I know in quarantine, there's been a lot of topics on, on uh, fad diets floating around, especially for athletes. What is good, what is not good? So the most common fad diets I hear are keto, intermittent fasting, celery juice, low carb. Why keto is not appropriate for the athlete? 
Well, it's inadequate carbs. We've talked a lot about how carbs are your body's main source of energy. They are, I would say they are like the king when it comes to energy. Um, our body functions best when we have adequate carbs and keto eliminates all of that. The other thing is it's hard for our body to digest fat. And so if you are going into practice on a mostly high fat diet, it's gonna be really hard to perform. The other thing is fun fact, if you didn't know this, the keto diet was designed for kids with epilepsy. And so unless you are being medically followed, it's not something that's going to be sustainable or um, beneficial for our training. And all of us, when I was looking at everyone, um, you guys are all still growing and we wanna make sure that we are supporting our growth as well. And the keto diet just doesn't do that. The intermittent fasting, uh, there's a lot of research out there, but it doesn't support it for athletes. And the reason it doesn't support it for athletes is because of the nutrient timing. You are restricted to what times you can eat. And we've talked about how important it is to maximize those nutrient timing windows. One to two hours before practice, having a snack or three to four hours for your meals, post-practice, making sure you're refueling within one to two hours, if not sooner. And so if your time window um, is outside of your practice time, you're not gonna be able to adequately fuel your body. The other thing is it, it impacts our ability to listen to our hunger cues. And we didn't talk too much about that, but you always wanna make sure you're in tune with, am I feeling hungry? Am I feeling full? Um, to make sure your body's getting the proper portions that are right for you. Um, anytime you're juicing, it's just not going to be adequate for growth. And when we are your guys's age, we want to make sure that we are growing appropriately. The other thing is we miss a lot of nutrients. Yes, vegetables are awesome. Fruits are amazing. But without carbs, fats, and proteins, we're not going to be able to grow well. Um, and we're missing fiber too. When we juice, we juice out all of the fiber, unless you're doing like a smoothie. And then low carb. We talked also about how low carb is not beneficial for the athlete um, because we need carbs in order to have adequate energy so we can stay focused during practice. If you've ever noticed during practice about halfway, maybe coach is talking and your mind's wandering and you're like, Whoa, oh wait, what did she just say? Chances are you're going to need a little bit of energy because one of the key signs that we're not adequately fueled is that we start to get distracted when it comes to being able to focus. So if you notice you're not focusing well in practice, maybe it's time to have a snack. Maybe it's time to sip on some sports drink. Okay, the other thing that comes up very often in my conversations with athletes is BMI, which if you guys don't know is body mass index. Don't need to worry about that too much. But the key thing here is that it does not account for body composition. It doesn't account for your muscle mass. Um, it's not a good measure of your health, especially for athletes. And the reason I emphasize this is because there's been a lot of talk about the importance of health with COVID and everything going on. Um, for athletes, we have different measures of health compared to the general population. And this, this is not one that I recommend using for any of my athletes um, when it comes to seeing how they're doing in terms of health. I love talking about nutrition because I think being able to fuel our bodies well is such an incredible opportunity. Our body is, the is what gives us the ability to compete, especially in a sport like synchronized swimming where you are using every part of your body to create beautiful movement, put routines together. Our bodies are so powerful. They're so cool and they deserve to be fueled well so we can perform well. Um, and all of our bodies are different and that's what makes us stronger. I was a base when I was competing. Um, Lorraine was on a couple of lifts during competitions. <laughs> we did, we threw her a couple times. Um, but you know, your body is the vessel that carries your greatness and you deserve to fuel it well to give yourself every opportunity to perform at your absolute best. Couple of keys to being a great athlete because nutrition is so important, but there are other things as well. What impacts your greatness? Your drive, your work ethic, how you care for your body, proper hydration, proper nutrition, positive self-talk, teamwork, and performance. Um, the positive self-talk is a big one. I wish I had more of an emphasis on that when I was competing. What does not? Um, that BMI, poor self-talk, comparison, your appearance, the size of your clothing. Those are some things that do not impact your ability to perform. And that's one of the reasons why I love nutrition because it is 
well, one, it's a science, um, but two, it allows us to elevate our performance more than anything else. It optimizes our training and it's a tool that we can use all the time. We always have to eat. Why, why not eat in a way that supports your training and elevates your ability to perform as an athlete? So my little key phrase at the end, go after your dreams, hold nothing back, and let your nutrition really help you. Um, I wish I had allowed my nutrition to help me. I think my nutrition when I was competing hindered me, which is why I'm so passionate about helping other athletes know how to fuel their bodies well. Um, and nutrition should be there to help you elevate your performance instead of hinder it.